Hello, Soldat! And in this episode of The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Reenacting the World War I German Soldier, I'll be going over how to properly attach your gas mask canister straps to a gas mask canister, specifically the number two size M16 model. Before I begin disassembling these straps and then reattaching them, I want to go over something that's critically important when it comes to gas mask canister straps. And effectively, that's that there really isn't a standard for what type to use. Now, the type that come with most reproduction gas mask canisters are not correct, mainly because of the material used and how they actually attach to your canister. So you won't want to use them at all. I don't actually have a pair to show you, so a picture will probably appear on string, screen giving you an example of what they look like. Instead, you'll want something that looks like this right here that I have, which is something that is rather analog compared to some of the things we have today. It's just simple. It's not complicated. It's easy to understand how it works. You want to get something that looks like either it was made in the trenches or it was just made for that gas mask at the time. The reproduction straps that come with reproduction gas mask canisters look very modern with the cloth and material used, as well as their manufacturing. This isn't to say that there's an actual standard that soldiers used. I have had a canister with an authentic strap, and it was obviously something that replaced what this would have been, and it was a trench modification. And this was pretty typical throughout the war. Trench modifications happened, and they were pretty common, especially as these probably wouldn't last too long in the mud. They'd get caught, they'd rip. Soldiers who couldn't afford to buy a new one probably made one out of the materials that they had around them. So if you are in that similar position and you can't buy one of these, you can definitely make your own. It's not that difficult. Um, it's something that you can do, and I might actually have a tutorial on making some based off the originals that I've seen. Another thing that I've seen is soldiers using their bread bag straps to actually hold the gas mask canister in place. Um, you might actually see this with some stormtroopers who are trying to repurpose the bread bag strap as they weren't having ammo pouches, or other soldiers who didn't need the bread bag straps for their ammo pouches, or just didn't want to use them. So with that out of the way, I want to go ahead and show you how to actually put this on. So for I'm just going to go ahead and have to disassemble this, and uh, you might actually learn how to properly go off and assemble it just from that. Um, it's a pretty simple design. It's not too complicated, which is pretty lucky. Um, you have to fully disassemble it to really fit it in. Now, for information, for, uh, for just reference, this right here is an authentic uh, M16 number two size gas mask canister. Now, the difference between this and a number one size is that a number one size would be about this big, about half the size, and would only be able to fit a spare filter or one M15 gummy mask. This size two could fit two filters or an M15 gummy mask and a spare filter. Now, for the M when the M17 gas mask came into production, it was a larger mask that couldn't really get folded easily. So this canister was the standard as it could only fit the M17 gas mask. The number one size couldn't fit the M17. The canister I have is actually in pretty good condition, and I'm really happy with it. Uh, the original paint is mostly intact, but that's getting off the subject, and that's just me bragging about things that I have. So, your strap is my strap. Personally, is in two pieces, and I will go ahead. I will post a link as to where I got it in the description. It's from Steve Fisher's Reproductions. Um, it's sort of an interesting site to get to, so just go to the description to find the uh, place where to find it. Um, it's got a simple design. It's a strip of tan canvas that has been sewn on both edges, that has been folded and sewn on both edges. The ends are rolled like so with what appears to be a thin leather covering uh, that is looks hand stitched, whereas everything else is machine, machine sewn, on, sewn in. This might actually be mach, machine stitching, but it is rolled there and then locked in place with some stitching. Uh, this right here has a slit for a button or a latch from your ammo pouch. And then this also has a similar roll. 
in a similar construction as to this. It comes with a metal uh, piece here for adjusting the strap and securing it. Now, putting it onto your canister. This right here will sit like this. Um, you can go ahead and customize it and just simply fold this and do a quick sew. I'm, I don't because I don't find it too necessary and if I'm going to be running around with this and this strap isn't going to be attached to anything, I remove it. Um, which isn't historically inaccurate, it's just all about preference. And this right here, you're just going to want to go through this first one here, like so. Like that. You just let that grab. And then you're going to make sure that's flat. So I've kept it flat the whole way. And you just put it in like so, and then over. And you just rip that in a bit. Then you put this in, trying to keep it flat. So whichever way keeps it flat the best. Then you have to go into the top. You fold, you bring this in like so. It has been grabbing all that footage, so I don't have to redo it. And then you just slip it right back underneath. You can easily adjust it just by pulling on that, like so. Another thing you can do is simply take this and fold it and sew it, and that will secure it so that it doesn't actually come off. Again, or you could do this so that it doesn't come off. I'm, I don't do that because I will, uh, I don't know how long I might use this. I might find a better one or I might get different straps depending on what I want to do. But that's effectively how to put on your straps for your gas mask canister. I was very confused when I first got this and it is definitely something that is, can be challenging for new reenactors and uh, for anyone who's not familiar with this style of strap. Now. You're going to get hit with a lot of people saying, um, you know, who might notice the way you're wearing your strap and talk about how it's not accurate due to military standards being one thing or how it was typical for another thing. And in response to that, I'd, I'll have to say that in reality, soldiers would wear the gas mask and put on the strap in whatever way was most comfortable comfortable for them to wear, whatever way made it easiest for them to access their gas mask, as in reality, these gas masks were a life-saving device. They were not something where they were worn on them exclusively on marches. This wasn't something where it was like your bayonet and spade have to be right here and there really isn't any other way for you to wear it. It wasn't something like that at all. This was something that you had to wear in whatever way made it easiest for you to access the gas mask personally because if you didn't have it like that, it could actually mean life or death. If you wear the strap in a certain way, because it's most comfortable or you have it attached in a certain way because it makes it easier to adjust, makes it easier to access your gas mask in a fast situation, then that's not inaccurate. That's exactly how soldiers would wear them. If you think that this strap is difficult to use and difficult to adjust to conform to your own personal preference and how easy it is to access the gas mask and you decide to custom make your own, that is that stays within the boundaries of what a custom made in the trenches gas mask strap would look like, that's not inaccurate. That's personal preference that would have been seen in the trenches. If there was a written military standard, it was not followed and soldiers did what they thought was best because in reality, they needed these gas masks to be easily accessible and comfortable to wear in order to, in order to survive, in order to survive gas attacks. So there really is no right or wrong way to wear this in terms of as, as long as it's easy to access the gas mask for you, and it's comfortable, or comfortable enough. The biggest issue that I found is that these things make a lot of noise, which can be very difficult to manage when we're, I'm playing airsoft, and I need to stay quiet. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of reenactment events where I can go into a full test to see how that would work in that environment, unfortunately. But uh, airsoft especially, it can be very difficult. So, with all that being said, this is probably going to be one of my quicker videos on these tutorials. 
Um, that's effectively putting the straps on the gas mask canister and the tips that I have for making your own or wearing them. Uh, anyone who says that there was some standardized way that all soldiers had to follow is not speaking the truth. And if you look at historical photographs, you'll find soldiers wearing them in all sorts of different fashions with various forms of straps and with varying degrees of angles in terms of how the gas mask canister was angled on their body. I've seen pictures of them like this, like this, like this, sometimes on the same soldier. Depends on the situation. So, in closing, this is how you effectively put on the straps for your gas mask canister and a good and some good advice on maybe making your own or how to decide on what type of strap works best. I hope this video was helpful. Um, I mean, not a lot of great information to gain from this other than a basic cosmetic item that a lot of people overlook. Um, this was requested by um, a user, I forget who it was that requested this, uh, their comment will be posted in, like, below me somewhere. So, yeah, that's basically how it's done. I hope this was helpful. Again, super small aspect, kind of short video here. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, stay tuned for some more content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.